So let's get back to that. Whenever one. you tell someone about themselves, right away someone throw a judgmental card. Ooh, he just called her out. If an individual uh, is dressing inappropriately, according to who? According the Bible? to morals and according to biblical principle. Exactly. See, a lot of people don't even know that the Bible even speaks of makeup. They say you're making Jeremiah up. The Bible speaks of makeup. The Bible speaks of jewelry. The Bible speaks of modesty. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. This is TOV, the Open Via TV, back with another video for you today. And today's video is about a pastor. His name is, I think, Gino Jennings who's been going viral for his preaching so i'm not gonna take any much time so without further talking let's start cooking This is like a dream come true. Head, headlines, but I'm, I'm hearing this message has, is not new to him. Uh, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play two clips from Pastor Gino Jennings. This is uh, Pastor Gino Jennings, uh, one of his sermons. So Christian looking some church flapping your ankle chains around, all on the choir, breasts hanging out, lips all red, nails painted red, purple, blue, green, long like. Okay, so that's, that's our phone number is 215 515 3481. Just Please to let people us. know, it's 215 515 3481. But we have more. This is uh, more from Pastor uh, Gino J. So, right now, I'm thinking they are using like a small snippet of the message. The birth canal is basically <laughs> the punani. We have had the Vincenzi. Gino the Jennings shoo -shoo. here. How you doing, sir? I'm Boo -boo. very well. Thanks for having me. Your message yes, has sir. been, uh, hmm. has it been misconstrued? It's, it sounds a little, a little uh, harsh. Of course. Wouldn't you say? Because you're only listening no, to a small okay. part. Okay. Uh, basically, what someone did, it took an excerpt. Okay. Mm -hmm. About a two or three minute excerpt of a closing year service. Um, but if someone would have heard the whole message, then it would have clarity of exactly what I was saying. Okay. What I was dealing with is the condition that the churches are in now. When I came up, I was told that the church is supposed to be a light to the sinner. Hmm. The church is not a light to the sinner. The sinner has became a light to the church. And this is why if you look at church today, church mimic the sinner. And a sure. lot of sinners don't have no respect for church because of that. Because when they go to the club and to the party, the same one that's in church is at the club. So and this is exactly what I'm talking about. Now, you say some stuff about women wearing, you know, mm -hmm. tight pants and yes. that they wear, you know, claws. Uh, <laughs> bird claws. Bird claws. Yes. That they're, um, was, was the word whores or, or prostitutes? Both. Again, Both. if you listen at the whole message, okay. it isn't because they wear it is what make them a whore or prostitute. I'm dealing with the appearance. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you look at a prostitute or a stripper, Someone in the church should not be looking like a stripper. You should be able to look at a church person and look at a stripper and not get them mixed and, and not get them mixed up as being the same thing. Pastor Gino Jennings, um, do you have a favorite stripper here? 
Okay, hold on. So, um, here's the thing, though. So right now, the 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 church is no longer a light to the world, but the church is basically feeding off of the world. Let me explain. Whenever somebody brings up the Bible and makes it caught in truth with no filter, Satan doesn't like that. So anytime you somebody going against a preacher for preaching God's word as it is and they get mad, it is because they know they are not doing what is right. Basically, from A to Z, meaning from Abel to Zechariah. All the wicked people hate them. Why? Is the um, Abel is the younger brother of Cain to Cain. When they did their sacrifice, Abel did what God asked, which is the right thing to do. And Cain didn't want to. He wanted to do his own thing. And because of Abel's um, righteousness, it made it was a message basically to Cain. He wasn't preaching to Cain. His his lifestyle was a message, and therefore Cain killed him. See, people that like to do evil, they hate and those that are do good that that actually do good. And those that do good don't hate those that do evil. They hope they can change. Right now. The church now. Let me let me let me start by saying this: Why the church has become worldly oriented? The reason is one: We have in sheep's clothing. They are still pagan, and so to appease the world and to be more accepted by the world and and by Satan, we decided to default to Satan's way. So when somebody like him or like myself or like other people that I know preach the word of God with no filter as it is, they don't like it because it gives them accountability. And as you know, women usually don't like accountability. But let's move on. Uh, from Philadelphia. Oh no, I don't deal with strip clubs. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Just but I came up in the hood. Okay, wh where'd you grow up? I grew up in Huntington Park. Okay. And brother, in Huntington Park, everything walked the streets. Mm. So it isn't like what I'm speaking to have uh, it's something that I haven't seen coming up. Um, you can see the strippers and the prostitutes walking the streets, and you see sometime uh, people that go to church stopping picking them up. So the church is no longer a light uh, to the center world. You can do the same thing in church as you do before you claim you're saved. What about church starting from within and being non-judgmental about people that do want to... Hold on. So, before she goes on, um, I'm going to mention something real quick. There is a person that one time asked me a question about would you date a girl in the world? And I said, well, you know what? More likely, that wouldn't be my first choice. But sometimes you have to think. Um, looking at the world and looking at the church, sometimes you wonder, oh, would it be better to date a girl outside of the church? And I'm, I said this. I said, if the girl that is in the church and the girl that is in the world they behave the same way, they talk the same way, they dress the same way, they walk the same way, they eat the same thing, they 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 listen to the same type of music, their behavior or their behaviors are identical, then I'll go with the one in the world. Because at least that one is not a hypocrite. You see, she's not a hypocrite. She's not walking and then putting a facade that she's a good Christian. You can put a Jesus lyrics if you want in your forehead. You can always put a Jesus lyrics on your body. Like a, put a cross, tattoo Jesus on your body, 
to make you look Christian. No, you are just like the world. But let's keep it moving. Find the word of God, but you're judging them from their appearance. Uh, uh, based okay, so she, I want to do it. Okay, so she said, you know what? They actually bring it back just a little bit. Let's see. Stop and picking them up. So the church is no longer a light uh, to the center world. You can do the same thing in church mm -hmm. as you do before you claim you're saved. What about church starting from within and being non-judgmental about people that do want to find the word of God, but you're mm -hmm. judging them from their appearance? Uh, uh, basically. Okay, so right now she brought a great, great point. But the problem is most of these people, you know what they do? They like to be, oh, don't judge me, don't judge me. The Bible actually talks about judging people. And yes, you can judge people. You're not supposed to judge them by appearance, for sure. But here is the verse that they usually go to when they want to do their nasty stuff. And they go to a verse like this, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 1 and 2. What's it what? Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. You know? And they're like, well, why are you trying to get the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank or the beam in your own eye? So how can you see my flaws when you have a big one blocking you? But you see, what they forget is they never try to understand why Jesus said what he said. Because in chapter 7 of John, verse number 3, Jesus also says, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. But guess what? Guess what? What do these women do nowadays? I'm going to tell you right now. They do this thing. They they go around dress like prostitute, just like he is saying, and they were, oh, don't judge me. Well, guess what? You always judge people from the first time you see them. And, and, he, is, and he is talking about the Christians, but let's make sure he's talking about the christian and not just guess so let's get back to that whenever one. you tell someone about themselves right away someone throw a judgmental card Ooh, he just called her out that's exactly what i just said earlier with these bible verses that they use uh, matthew 7 verse 1 they always oh don't don't judge me because i'm like well i can judge I'm not going to judge by just looking at you. Your behavior is not just your appearance. But when you tell a woman she's doing something wrong, well, don't be judging me. The judgment card. That's exactly what they do. If an individual uh, is dressing inappropriately. According to who? According the Bible? to morals. And according to biblical principle. Exactly. So a lot of people don't even know that the Bible even speaks of makeup. They are saying you're making Jeremiah it up. The Bible speaks 30. of makeup. The Bible speaks of jewelry. The Bible speaks of modesty. So it isn't something that's Actually, made. Actually, I just said it was from Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30. Let's actually go and see if it's right. I think it's what it is. In Jeremiah chapter 4. Let's see. I think that was that. Chapter 4, I think it's verse 30 or verse 29, something like that. Because I remember that like a long time ago. Oh, there we go. Verse 30. And in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 30. And when you are plundered, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself with crimson, Though you adorn yourself with um, ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with paint, paint meaning your 
painting your eye, right? That's makeup. In vain, you will make yourself fair. Your lovers will despise you. They will seek your life. And unfortunately, the women, ladies, us men, we don't like when you put on that much makeup. The more natural you can be, the better we like you. You see, they don't read the Bible. That's why they don't know these things. But, let's move on. It's a true fact. So I have on makeup. I have on lip gloss. So what would, what would be your Within, assessment of me? Nothing. Uh, as a woman. My assessment wouldn't be anything. Exactly. But from a biblical perspective. Yeah. In the fourth chapter of the book of Jeremiah, it plainly states, oh. When thou art spoiled, what will thine do? Though thou rentest thine face with paint and deck yourself with ornaments of gold, the scripture says, In vain do you make yourself fair. I don't Hold believe. Let me, let me pause that for you so you guys can go back and reread and reread this one. So remember down again, chapter 4 of Jeremiah, verse 30. Read it again. I'm going to keep right now for a moment. But let's continue. Uh, from a biblical perspective, that a woman have to wear makeup and fake hair to be beautiful. Exactly. And this is one of my arguments. Uh, the women have been commercialized in such a way until they feel as though their hair is not good enough for them, so they want to buy some. The way God made them isn't good enough for them, so they want to put on lipstick and all this other thing. Exactly. I'm a firm believer that God's creation is naturally beautiful. Right. Beauty so don't come in them, the box. So that now, equates them to being a prostitute or a whore. No, yeah, now pastor, no. So mm -hmm. you know. It's the appearance. It's, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep, I'm going to stop because this part, you know, this is part number one. I'm going to stop soon. So here's what happened, young lady. Here's what happens. Many women are not able to leave their house without putting makeup on. And that is a low self-esteem. That's, that's, that's sad. That is bad. If you have to leave your house, if for, in order for you to leave your house, you have to have makeup to hide your true face. This is sad. So basically saying, God, whatever you created is not good enough. I have to make it look good. And by the way, let me go there actually. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 4. Okay. In chapter 3, in chapter 3 of Isaiah. Oh, no, I don't want to go there. In chapter 3 of Isaiah, I'm going to show you something very interesting. In chapter 3 of Isaiah, in, in the latter verses, we see it talks about judgment on Judah and Jerusalem. Right? And then from verse 16 to verse 26, verse 20 to 26, it talks, about, it talks about oppression and luxury condemned. It talks about the daughters of Zion from verse 16. They are haughty walked with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking in and mincing as they go, making a jingling with their feet. They talk about talk about jewelry, bling bling, that to make people look at you and think you're something. Now verse number chapter four now chapter four is where the the rubber meets the road. Listen to this, people. Chapter 4 begins like this. And in that day, seven women, and those are not actually literal women, and those are the seven churches in the book of Revelation chapter 1 or chapter 1 through chapter 3. I think it's um, Ephesus, Smyrna, Chetera, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea, and Pergamos. Those are the seven churches. Seven women shall take hold of one man, which is Jesus Christ, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name. Let us be called Christians. 
let us be called Christians, right, to take away our reproach. So basically, the Christians they wanna get, they wanna have the label Christians, but they wanna live like the world. That's exactly what um, Pastor Gino Jennings is talking about right now. We are behaving just like the world, but we want to be called Christians. Actually, I preached on that thing one time. The word prostitute in the Bible, and the word defiling, and the word profane, it is the same word in Hebrew, which is kalal. Yes. But, you know what? Let's move on because we have to finish. We're going to finish soon. The, the most sensational things, you know, out of, you know, the things that made, you know, made you go viral. Are mm -hmm. you saying, you know, women, you look like whores, you look like prostitutes. Do, do you think those words were too harsh? No. That you're using? <clears throat> no. no. Okay. Old folks used to say it this way. Mothers used to tell their daughters, don't go out here looking like Jezebel. Ho, ho. Have you ever heard that statement? Yes. Do you, Do you know, know how the Bible who describes Jezebel? Is? Please break it down for us. In 2 Kings, the ninth chapter, the Bible speaks mm -hmm. about Jezebel. She painted her face. It mm -hmm. was a certain attire. Mm -hmm. In the book of Proverbs, it clearly is distinguished between, it says, the attire of a harlot. But then mm -hmm. in the New Testament, in the book of Timothy, it talks about women adorning yourselves in modest apparel. There is a difference yes. between the attire of a harlot and modest apparel. There's nothing modest about a woman in the street, half naked. Uh, these leggings that women wear, they wear mm, them to church. Exactly. But, I mean, doesn't church also say, come as you are? No. no. The Bible ain't never said that. Uh, no, I'm just saying, as a church, as you know, don't you want people to come no. as they yes. are right now? Yes, say, they if they're, say if they're trying to change their life and they yes. have makeup on and they mm -hmm. have tights on. Could we you welcome go like them. this? Yes. Yes, you can. Okay. Yes, we welcome them. But when yeah. you come as you are. That doesn't mean but that you stay as you are. No, we didn't say that. But see, this is, my, well, this is what I'm saying. Churches today, it isn't just come as you are. It's like, yeah. It's stay as you are. Stay as you are. You can go into any church, practically 99.9 .9 of churches, and you will see more naked females. Our brothers got their pants hanging down, showing their underwear. This is church. This is what church has become now. Okay. Well, so it should be a difference between what you wear in the street and clubbing mm -hmm. and partying in what you wear in church. So society says it's normal just to be naked. It's normal to look that way. No, it is not. We are Pastor Gino Jennings. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop it right here. I'm going to stop it right there. We'll pick it up next time, 816. So let me close with that one. Um, the, the lie is come as you are let me tell you the bible does never said to come as you are actually no they always talk about oh jesus accepts you as you are that's a lie jesus does not accept you as you are he receives you as you are but he's going to make the changes in you to become perfect so he can accept you you see Receiving somebody doesn't mean you accept them because guess what? We are sinners. Jesus doesn't accept our Jesus doesn't accept our lifestyle. No. He receives us as we are sinners. But he wants to make the transformation so our lifestyle may become better. That that's a lie people have been preaching. Especially those false teachers in the churches. Um, come as you are. Jesus accepts you as you are. That's a false statement. This is not true. So. <sighs> man. I feel like I wanted, to, I, wanted to, I, wanted, I wanted to start preaching now. But I have to stop because I have other things that I have to go and attend at this moment anyway guys this was tov the open world tv back with another video for you this was part one we'll come back for part two very soon 
until then actually until then I'm out <laughs>